So we have a very pleasant surprise. And guess what? The dollarization is accelerating once again. India is now leading the charge and they are essentially giving the world a playbook. This is how to reduce dependence on the dollar. They are striking deep at the heart of the petrol dollar, breaking the link between oil and the reserve currency. In our lead story today from Reuters, India makes their first crude oil payment to the UAE in Indian rupees. Both countries are settling bilateral trade in their local currency and they are extending this to the oil markets. India's top refiner making payment in rupees for the purchase of a million barrels of oil from the Middle Eastern nation. And now all you defenders of the petrol dollar, you might be thinking, hey, a million barrels is nothing. With crude prices at around $80 a barrel, this trade is only around $80 million or so. But this is a full tanker's worth of crude in the physical oil markets, guys. This is a big deal. And it's settling an incredible precedent for the world to follow. India is telling the world that the US dollar can be bypassed. You don't need any reserve currency to conduct global trade. This is what we need to focus on because if India is moving away from the dollar, other countries will follow suit really soon. Remember that the BRICS summit is coming soon next week, guys. It's less than seven days away and something big is brewing in the works. According to South Africa, the summit is going to discuss two topics that will literally shift the world order. They are going to discuss the accelerated use of local currencies, which is exactly what India has done with the UAE. And I find it a little hilarious that they explicitly said the dollarization isn't on the agenda, but that is exactly what local currency trade is doing, right? At this point, I think the BRICS, they are trolling the West with misdirection and allowing them to hallucinate. But it gets better. The big catalyst for bilateral trade will be the expansion of the bloc, which is also on the summit's agenda so we can prepare for big fireworks when the group meets next week. We could see expansion happening with Saudi Arabia throwing their head in the ring by joining BRICS and that will open up the true floodgates of the dollarization. Let's go through the India-UAE deal because it's truly fascinating and I believe China is going to replicate this with the Gulf states as well. And whether it's India or China buying oil in rupees or yuan, it is an overall win for BRICS and a setback for the reserve currency. Now, this deal happened back in July when India signed an agreement with the UAE to settle trade in their local currency. And the reason they gave was to cut transaction costs by eliminating dollar conversions. But I believe the true reason is to reduce their dependence on the US dollar. Over the past five years, India's rupee has been dropping against the dollar, which is making their imports of energy more expensive. Just take a look at the big drop from March 2022. Once the Federal Reserve started hiking rates, the Indian rupee literally took a nose dive down. So if you're Modi, you have to ask yourself hard questions. What if the Federal Reserve keeps hiking rates? What if the petrol dollar lasts forever? And the only reasonable answer that you have is bilateral trade in rupees. And here's the interesting question. How far can India push this rupee trade with the UAE? In order to make this determination, we just need to look at their bilateral trade balances. India has a trade deficit with the UAE and this means India imports more stuff than they export out. So this acts as a cap to how much bilateral trade they can do outside of the dollar but it is still an enormous amount. In 2022, India exported $28 billion worth of goods while importing $45 billion worth from the UAE and this means the Gulf state can effectively switch up to $28 billion worth of trade from dollars to rupees. And that is the amount of goods they can buy from India without holding on to excess rupees, right? So there's not much currency risk here. As they import more stuff from India, more trade can be done outside of the dollar. And trade between India and the UAE is only going to grow from strength to strength. And what does this mean for both India and the UAE? They can now effectively hold fewer dollars in their reserves. And when you hold fewer dollars, there's now less incentive for you to buy more US Treasury bonds because now you don't even need the reserve currency for trade. Really funny how switching away from dollars in bilateral trade in commodities can have such a big ripple effect. And we have said it many times on this channel until my face has turned blue. You can't challenge America in the financial or the debt markets. The only way to win is through bilateral trade. And that means pricing commodities and goods outside of the dollar. Now take India's playbook and then extend it out to the rest of the BRICS. Now you see what I'm talking about. They have set a precedent, guys. The UAE, which is an OPEC country, has de-dollarized their trade for the currency of a BRICS member. They have said no to the US dollar 
And it's just a matter of time before the rest of the Gulf states truly wake up. Sooner or later, they will realize the need to diversify away. Maybe you can't really escape America's military hegemony, but you can definitely move away from the dollar system. And I keep coming back to this chart because it tells us the future of the world. The BRICS has long surpassed the G7 in GDP contribution. And this isn't just some fairy tale with zero effects. This is telling us where future growth will be. And when you have one part of the world growing faster than the other, that means more consumption will happen over there. There will be more trade demand in the bloc compared to the West. And this is what we need to talk about, demand power. We already know that the BRICS nations have a ton of commodities, Russia, India and Brazil. They have everything from oil and gas to wheat and rice. And that is just the supply side. But demand power is just as important. And that's why the West, they had the initial confidence to issue oil price caps and sanctions against Russia. Because collectively, they still have a lot of demand power. But the winds are now shifting. As BRICS gets bigger and grows their economies, their demand power rises. And this means they have more bargaining power to drive trade outside of the dollar. Back in 2021, the top 10 largest oil consumers were mainly in the global south, not the galactic north. If we combine China, India, Russia, Saudi Arabia and Brazil, we have 30% of global consumption between them. And as they grow bigger, their share of consumption will increase. And this increases their demand power. This is the big deal because BRICS can now head to the bargaining table with their fancy suits. They can flex their muscles and say, we would like to buy oil outside of dollars. We will use our own currencies now. And when that moment happens, boom, the oil producing countries will start trading in yuan. They'll start trading in rupees, completely bypassing the dollar. Plus, it totally makes sense for them. If you hold rupees, you can buy vital commodities like rice and wheat from India. We are in a food crisis, guys, and you can forgo everything like Netflix and Hollywood movies, but you still need to eat. And on the other hand, if you hold the Chinese yuan, you can buy almost every finished good on earth. They are the world's factory, so you can access machinery, computers, and vehicles using the Chinese yuan. And this huge demand power sets up the ultimate incentive for countries, especially the OPEC nations, to join the BRICS bloc. And if they do, it will be a complete de dollarization nightmare. Now, do you understand why America is trying their best to keep Saudi Arabia away from BRICS? The UAE trading in rupees is bad enough. Just imagine if MBS one day wakes up and pushes the de dollarization button. It's a really shiny button with the words oil for yuan. And that's why we suddenly have this Saudi Israel normalization deal that could involve protecting the petrodollar system. I mean, out of nowhere, this peace agreement suddenly happened right after China brokered a deal between the kingdom and Iran. It is not a coincidence. Now, I don't think the Saudis will buy and defend the dollar. I don't think the kingdom is just going to sit around and watch the UAE overtake them in global trade either. Because when you trade outside of the dollar, you open up more trading opportunities with that particular country, right? And I believe whether Saudi Arabia joins BRICS or not, they will start pricing their oil and commodities in the Chinese yuan. Remember that Saudi Aramco, their national oil company, has pledged 50 years of energy security for China. Then we have Beijing also increasing their crude imports from MBS by 40%. This is despite a slowdown in the global economy. And we mustn't forget that China is Saudi Arabia's biggest customer and it isn't just oil. China is the kingdom's biggest trading partner. It's really shocking to see the trade gap between the US and China, especially when it comes to Saudi Arabia. China's trade with MBS is almost $90 billion strong, while America comes in at around $30 billion. That's triple the amount compared to the United States. So they have true bargaining power when it comes to the dollarization. And I think the next step for the Saudis is to start pricing their oil exports in yuan, and this could happen very, very soon. Remember the refinery deal between Aramco and China? If we dig through the details, we can tell why this will happen. This is a $3.6 billion deal where Saudi Arabia will supply China with almost half a million barrels of oil a day. The plant will also produce 4.2 million tons of ethylene per year. So think about this. Oil is coming to China and the end products are being processed in China and will be sold to the Chinese market. The pricing will obviously be in Yuan. And when that happens, it will be a true wake-up call to the world that it's possible to break away. Then we'll see an incredible domino effect where the rest of OPEC countries start bilateral trade in local currencies. And what India has done is to start a chain reaction. Remember the Oppenheimer movie? 
the rupee trade with the UAE is like a single neutron bombarding an atom of uranium which unleashes even more neutrons. Commodities and bilateral trade is the weak spot of the petrodollar system. Remember what Gandao said about the One Ring. You cannot destroy it using any mortal weapon. You must cast it into the fires of Mount Doom. Where it was made, it will be unmade. The petrodollar became the reserve currency because of the deal made in the 70s. So what we are seeing today is one big gigantic Lord of the Rings journey. The Global South is slowly ferrying the dollar towards Mount Doom and it might be MBS that will cast it in. By trading commodities in local currencies, the world is effectively reducing the practical need for dollars. And it is this need that is supporting everything else, right? Especially the US debt markets, which we'll need to talk about for a bit. Now, there are two charts that we need to look at. The first is the US national debt. Since the debt ceiling was suspended in June, in just a few months, the Treasury borrowed at least $1.2 trillion more. They are borrowing money to conduct deficit spending as usual. But here lies the big problem. They aren't borrowing at 0-1% to interest rates anymore. The yields on the bonds are now well over 4% across the board. Doesn't matter if it's short term or long term. And because of this insanity, interest payments are about to hit $1 trillion a year. It is a parabolic move up that we can't ignore. So if more countries start bilateral trade in local currencies, that will mean demand for treasury bonds will drop. But because the US still borrows a ton of money, that means demand is still high. And in order for Janet Yellen to sell her bonds, she will need to jack up yields in order to attract buyers. But this, however, increases the interest payments and pushes America closer towards a default. So you can see how dangerous this chain of events can be. There will come a tipping point where countries start funneling back all these dollars to the United States for real assets. You could be buying gold, you could be buying real estate or even American stocks. And when that happens, the true inflation demon will be unleashed. And that's why this move by India is really a big deal. We know they aren't big fans of China, but it doesn't really matter when it comes to the dollar. The end goal is still the same across the global south. We need to have more trading options outside of the greenback. There's always that lingering fear of sanctions and the Federal Reserve playing with interest rates. You have no control over your economy if it's too exposed to the dollar system. For example, Russia's ruble is now weakening against the dollar. It is now 100 rubles to the dollar, but they are insulated against the worst effects because they have bilateral trade with China for imports. However, the Russian central bank still needed to hike interest rates by 350 basis points to 12%. So there are still some effects because of a stronger dollar. Not all countries can just hike their interest rates up by 3.5% in a day, especially if they are highly leveraged economies. It will just crash their economy. So the easiest way is to slowly reduce the dependence on dollars through bilateral trade. And we're going to see more local currency trade across the world. And I believe the next shoe to drop will be a shocking move by the Saudis. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Will OPEC start trading outside of the dollar? And which countries are the next to de-dollarize? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.